I'm Scott Rouse. I'm a body language expert and analyst, and I train law enforcement in the military in interrogation and body language. Mark? I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language. Help people all over the world to stand out, win trust, gain credibility every time they communicate, including some of the leaders of the G7. Chase. Hey, I'm Chase Hughes. I did 20 years in the military, wrote the number one best selling book on influence, persuasion, and behavior profiling. And I train people in those things today. Greg? I'm Greg Hartley. I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor. I've written 10 books on body language and behavior, put together the number one body language tactics.com course with Scott. I spend most of my time on Wall Street or corporate America. All right. Today, we're going to talk about uh, Travis Scott and what happened at the concert uh, that he was at, that he was performing at. And Greg, I think you, you found the video and have the details on this. Why don't you tell us about it? Yeah. So, and I think it's called... Now I'm going to make a mistake here. I think it's called Astro World, the Astro World yeah, Festival. That's true. And he was in a concert, and there are now nine confirmed dead people from some crush in the concert. And there's a lot of conjecture. You know, people jump to conclusions about what's going on and whether he had any part in it and all of that kind of thing. I saw as late as today, one more person died. This reminds me of when I was young, the Who concert, of course, you know, where yeah. there was the same kind of tragedy. And what we're not going to cover here is any kind of investigation. What we're not going to cover here is any of the facts of the case, because we don't, that's not what we're doing. We're going to look at his apology or his statement after this concert for any indicators that his body language is telling us that he's being honest, that he's being you know, whatever. That's what we're here for. All right, here we go. I just want to send out prayers to the to the ones that was lost last night. We're actually working right now to identify the families so we can help assist them through this tough time. You know, my fans, my fans like, my fans really mean the world to me and I always just really want to leave them with a positive experience. And any time I can make out, you know, anything that's going on, you know, I, you know, I just stop the show and, you know, help them get the help they need, you know? Um, I could just never imagine the severity of the situation. Uh, we've been working closely. Uh, we've been working closely with everyone to just try to get to the bottom of this. The city of Houston, HPD, fire department. You know, everyone to, uh, you know, help us, help us figure this out. So if you, if you have any information, um, you know, please just contact your local authorities. Um, Everybody continue to just keep your prayers. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly just devastated. and I could never imagine anything like this just happening. And I'm gonna do everything I can to keep you guys updated and just keep you guys informed on what's going on. Um, love you all. All right, uh, Chase, what do you got? This uh, head touching is uh, crazy. I, I've never seen anyone do this uh, this much before. So I had to go back this morning and uh, I had a chance to look at this for a few minutes this morning. I watched several videos and interviews of him. This is not in his baseline. This head forehead touching and all this is not in his baseline. I'll let you guys talk about what that means and what that what that could potentially mean uh, for what we're, we're doing here. I think the uh, insurance that you have to get to hold an event like this is probably millions and millions of dollars worth of liability insurance. And I would assume that they likely told him not to apologize uh, for anything that happened or to admit guilt that for anything that happened. So if you're seeing that and thinking that there's some guilt here, I don't think that's what we're looking at. Uh, this forehead touching and rubbing is, is most likely self-soothing and we don't see a lot of grief. We see some nervousness and we see some insecurity here and uh, failing for words, not not really uh, knowing exactly what to say. I think he's, very, of, of course, very sad this happened, but is more worried about the impromptu uncraft message and how it's going to be perceived. And I think this is uh, potentially the cause of some of the insecure or self-soothing behaviors that we're seeing here. Uh, Mark, what do you think? Yeah. So, so I wonder about the impromptu nature of this, Chase, because when I look at the statement, the statement is quite a well-crafted statement in some ways. So, but there is, just like you've, you, you're saying there, there's some major um, 
uh, I guess, discontinuity between what I'm seeing in the body language and how well crafted that statement seems. Let me just fill that out a bit. So the statement is is good, but the nonverbal as a generalization for me seems stressed and tired. And then when you put that alongside the control over the image here, in that he's got height dominance over the camera, and it's been, I expect, filtered in some way to be presented in black and white, rather than I would presume the color with which that phone, I'm going to assume it's on a phone, I'm going to assume this was loaded straight up to, I think, WhatsApp, though I don't know, there may have been, there may have been some third parties in the way. But if there is a third party in the way, or he uploaded this, I wonder why it's been converted into black and white. I wonder why that um, that dominating position. It seems like there is a uh, some craft around perception management here, not only in the way it's constructed that the 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 dialogue there or the or the statement there but also the visual presentation so it rings some alarm bells for me in that really what you want to be doing here is a, a fairly good statement like i think that is but then really not so much demonstration of the emotion there because the focus needs to be on the victims here in a in a kind of a pr 101 focus on the victims not yourself but he's drawing huge amounts of attention to himself and his own stress and confusion and and potential tiredness uh, i see there uh, i'm honestly just devastated that doesn't need the honestly in there i'm I'm just devastated would be fine. Look, um, in, in a PR 101 situation here, it would be a, it would be a good statement that he's making there, but it needs to be delivered with actually way less demonstrative feeling, way less layers of, of, um, application of different color and, and, and angle, uh, on it. I uh, hope that makes sense to everybody. Uh, Scott, what have you got on this one? All right. I see what you're saying. And right out of the gate, what he's saying, he says, uh, I want to send prayers out to the ones that was lost last night. That's what that was verbatim what he said. So you don't send out prayers to to the victims. You send them out to God or whoever your God is. Don't get me wrong um, about that. And, you know, I guess that everything would go well and those types of things. I think in my opinion a lot of this stuff turns inward turns toward himself it's a lot of focus on himself even from what you're saying mark from the the angle of the camera to the you know making it black and white so it looks cool but that's his thing you know he's got to look cool he's got to do all those things i think this whole thing with the, with the hand rubbing his head that could be an adapter i'm sure it is in a way because he doesn't know what he's going to say and i'm sure like you said chase they've given him said look don't say this this or this and then do it you know so go do, go do that if you're going to do it and because he has to put something out that's the way things are these days so he says what he's saying and it just looks so uncomfortable because i think he feels bad about it but he doesn't feel he's not connected to those people and it was just a big old bunch of people and he doesn't feel that connection to him i don't think I haven't been in the music business in a long time. I know one of the things that, that, that the artists, from what I understand, is you connect with your audience and you watch them and you listen to them. You watch Dave Grohl. You know, he, does, he, he pays such close attention to his audiences. When someone starts a fight, he kicks them out. He stops the show and says, you got to go, man. So I'm not so sure this, I'm not so sure Travis was, was um, connecting with his audience the way he should because I've seen video of everybody hollering at him to stop because there was something happening. And if he didn't see something happening, and couldn't realize there was a problem. Not that he would know what was going on exactly or that people were dying. And I don't know if it was up front, I think it was out toward the gates. Then how could he, you know, so on, on that part of it, I'm with him. You know, I, I, I totally get it. How the heck could he know any of that? But it seems a little bit uh, inwardly focused on that because he says I eight times through the whole thing. He says I'm three times and we or we are three times. He only mentions them, I think, twice in the whole thing at the beginning and, and toward the end. Um, but overall, I think he's, I don't know, I think he's concerned and he feels bad about it, definitely. But what can he do about it? And he doesn't feel that connection with his audience that, that I think a lot of performers feel. So that that's my take on it. Greg, what do you got? Yes, I'm going to surprise you and tell you I've seen him perform. 
You would never have imagined that probably. But Where, was this? Where was, I was this? Where was this? Super Bowl 19. Uh, Super Bowl in 2019. How was it? Was it was awesome? On, oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, I, I'm not surprised he can't hear anything because the number of people oh. who were just going crazy, I didn't know who he was. You know, I mean, I was there for the Super Bowl and it was a great big halftime show with lots of folks. Was and it too loud for you, Greg? Noise generated. Yeah, yeah, I'm old. So no, the amount the of noise was generated by his fans was it, it was amazing. So I'm not surprised he couldn't hear what was going on in the back. Number one. Number two, I think that this thing I've known people remember, I was in construction for a long time. And people in construction are under high stress. And some people rub their forehead under stress. Now, if you give this guy a message that he's not allowed to say, this is not a guy who has been in a lot of trouble this way, then rubbing his forehead might be a way to soothe might be a way to relax, we call those adapters or comforting gestures, whatever it is. But a lot of times people will massage those muscles in the middle of their forehead. That's just part of who they are. Um, I will also tell you, he breaks a lot of eye contact and you might immediately jump to that means something. But Chase, like you, I watched an Ellen interview with him. I watched one with uh, his girlfriend, um, spouse, whatever you want to call her, Kylie Jenner. And I watched one other one with, uh, I forget who it was, but in all of those, I think it was Forbes, in all of those, he breaks eye contact when he's thinking and he breaks eye contact down and only makes eye contact when he's trying to make a point. So that's his baseline. He's kind of got a geeky laugh and, you know, just, he's just not a guy who makes a lot of eye contact. So that's not a red flag for me. This isn't. What I hear there, and I think you're right, Mark, is there's some preparation that went into it. Let's face it, when you have his amount of resource, you're going to talk to a lawyer before you say anything, or they're going to talk to you whether you want them to or not. And I think what we're seeing here is exactly that. They've given him some prepared things to say he's trying to get out, but he's also trying to get out whatever it is he wants to say. And that stress is causing him to do a lot of this. So I see genuine. I think we're probably seeing, you know, what he has to deliver with some preparation. That would be what, the way I would put it. That's it. Excellent. That's what I got. All right. Well, let's run around the room and everybody very quickly give it give an over an overview of what you think is going on. We'll start with Mark. We'll go to Chase and then Greg, and then I'll wind it up. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, best I can say about this is it's a little bit of a PR misstep. I mean, not to not to um, minimize what's happened here in terms of the the casualties and the deaths and the the tragedy here. It then turns into a PR misstep for me because there's too much gloss essentially, or work been done on the imagery here, too much presentation of emotion here, uh, whether it's it's real or not. I think it's most likely real, uh, but, but a little bit big uh, for this situation. And I think he probably feels a little bit suppressed in that there are things he can say and things he can't say. And essentially, he's a lyricist. He's somebody who is known for saying stuff in a certain way. And here, you know, he can't be a, a poet in this situation. He has to be a, a diplomat and a lawyer and and hold his cards quite close. Uh, Chase, what are your thoughts? Yeah, really agree with that. If you look at him anywhere else, he's one of the musicians, rock stars, fill in the blank, whatever, that is used to performing actions that put him in the center of attention. The like the diamond teeth thing, the outfits that he wears, the way he behaves is, please, I need to be the center of attention in every room. And now he's got to make a video where he's not. And I think that was very difficult. The emotions, I think, are real, but I think it was very difficult for him to come forward and actually be a leader that is putting someone else uh, before himself and not being the center of attention. I think the black and white video might have been an attempt to mute uh, some of his uh, flashiness there. Maybe the advice of somebody that uh, is on his PR staff or something like that. Greg? Yeah, I think, again, I see him trying to deliver a message. Probably has a lot of things rolling in his head, more than one tape running, because what he wants to say, what he's been told not to say, and, and, and. And that's creating stress, and it makes him you know, rub his forehead. Whether that's good or bad for his PR, don't know. I mean, it does it connect with the people it needs to connect with when you have the kind of money that's involved in this and the kind of inevitable lawsuits they're going to come as a result of this i think i read yesterday there are already 16 or 18 lawsuits mm -hmm. then you're under high duress and this is not a guy who's been in that situation i would think many times and you know he does want to connect with the people who support him and that kind of thing and i guarantee he's had some coaching whether he sought out the coaching or not that's what i got i think he's mostly yeah. honest scott 
All right, I agree with you guys. We're seeing high stress. And that's the thing. And again, I think you guys are right. We're seeing this was the, he's getting the idea across, but he doesn't know specifically what he's going to say, but he's got to cover specific. They said, cover these things as you talk about, but do not say this. I think that was the, might have been the most training he got. I don't know how long after, how do you know, do we know how long after the, this happened that he's doing this? Is I it at that show? I, I didn't, I didn't check that. No, it wasn't at the show. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Okay. I thought maybe it was afterwards, uh, but I think we're seeing a lot of stress and we're seeing all the things we should see in somebody is in that situation. So if somebody thinks, oh, he's not, doesn't really feel the grief there, even though we're not seeing a whole lot of grief muscle, we're seeing a lot of stress there. I think we're seeing stress from all the things that have happened at the show. And, all, and if he's gotten information, dude, we're going to get sued. We're, we're going the hole on this one. I think that might be what we're seeing as well. So I think everything is real. Looks all the way it should to me. Everybody good? Yeah, good. All right, good. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe. Just hit that little red thing down there, and uh, you'll become a panelist. Just like all the people that are subscribers, they become panelists. It's not that you're any more special than anyone else, but we do read your emails, and we do reply to the ones who are, are uh, panelists a lot faster than we do to, to a non-panelist. How's that sound? That I would bad. say they are, they are more special. Yeah. To us. I think you might be right. <laughs> I like them more. Okay. <laughs> the shinier, right. the glossier. That's true. <laughs> all right. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> see y'all. I don't know why I said, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know.